We are terrible at this game. <laughs> That's all there is to it. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope the start of your week is going well. Uh, we are going to be jumping into a Sultai reanimator list today, which is just one of my favorite lists. But uh, I will say before we jump into this, Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not already, uh, not only does it go to support the channel, of course, which is super helpful, but on top of that, you're entered to win free cards and not just like from now until Streets of New Capenna come out, comes out, although uh, that is the current giveaway. We're giving away a draft booster of that set. That's for all future giveaways, uh, which we do quite a lot, especially during standard sets. We, we tend to give away a good bit. So I do encourage you guys to check that out. It really would make a big difference for us, but also Again, it's a great way to get your hand on, hands on some free cards, but let's talk about today's deck, guys. Like I said, Sultai Reanimator is the list. I, You guys probably know this by now. I am a huge component for the Reanimator list. I absolutely love them. I think they're so fun, uh, and this might be my personal favorite. I think this deck is phenomenal. Uh, to talk about this a little bit, we'll actually go from the top down. Uh, so the big targets, the big Reanimator targets are uh, the Huntmaster, which is unique because not only is it a giant 6-6 six, six that of course if you flip is very very good but it also enters the battlefield with two two twos along with it uh, now what this does is it gives us an option for the point and shoot decks uh, because what we can do is yeah maybe they can kill the hunt master but they also have to kill the other two twos to be able to really stabilize uh, and so depending on the decks we're against and depending on the board state the hunt master might be the better option now additionally coma does a similar job and that it does come down and at the beginning of each upkeep it does create a three three but it's not immediate uh, and so you do have to be very cautious with this one however Coma is certainly, I think, the more powerful card because you can sacrifice those three threes, give it indestructible, or tap a permanent and then remove the activated abilities for the turn. So there's a lot of tech and thought that went into the reanimator targets here. Now, there are two ways to actually reanimate in this deck. The first is a pretty obvious one, Dire Graph Rebirth. This one allows you to bring a card back from the graveyard to the battlefield. You can flash it back as well, so if you happen to have it in your graveyard, uh, it's not the end of the world. You can still use it. But uh, we also have Junji, which in in turn is also a reanimator target but uh it does allow us to bring back other cards from the battle or from the graveyard if it happens to die and so this gives us some other kind of resilience options especially against the sweeper decks which we know there are a lot of right now uh if you have junji out you can actually still get something back uh and so that's really good culling ritual does a great job of ramping us into the diagraph rebirth in particular so uh what this does is destroy each non-land permanent with mana value two or less and then adds a black or green to your uh mana pool for each permanent destroyed this way say this is two creatures right say it's turn four we drop this we get two creatures with it well first and foremost that adds two mana to our mana pool okay so importantly uh we we get a little bit of the mana we spent on this to get something back but if a creature died this turn diagraph for birth also gets a little bit cheaper and therefore if we have enough mana we can actually double up and really take over the board state very very quickly uh in a much more powerful sequence of turns now i'm not saying that's going to happen every time a lot of times we'll find other uses for that mana but that is a potential opportunity for us uh, Thrill of Discovery, going to be able to throw some stuff into the graveyard, dive further into the deck. Mulch is fairly similar, uh, does save all the lands for us, which is quite nice. We do have the Meat Hook Massacre, since we really just have really strong creatures for the most part. Um, this is a really good way to uh, kind of deal with the board, as well as the Infernal Grasp. We do also have the Undead Butler, uh, which mills three cards as soon as it comes into play. When it dies, you may exile it. Then if you do return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand so this gives you again a little bit of replayability 
uh, as well as the abandoned mire in the sideboard, this is going to give us a little bit of an option to uh, pull some stuff back from the graveyard if we so choose. So very interesting deck here. This does come with a full sideboard uh, because this is actually built for best of three, but I've had some very good luck with it in best of one. Uh, and so we're going to give that a shot today. We're hopefully going to have some fun, reanimate some big stuff and uh, enjoy one of my favorite archetypes. So let's jump right in, guys. Let's start the week off right. Let's see if we can get some some awesome wins with this one. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And this is an interesting hand, but I definitely think we can give it a shot. Uh, against a lot of the faster decks, that Culling Ritual really does a lot. Uh, and so this is going to be a nice little sweep up for us if we need it. And then that Thirst for Discovery is hopefully going to get us further into the deck and get us where we need to be. So um, I'm going to lead on the island here. Uh, given that we are most likely going to need to play that Thirst for Discovery on three, I feel like this is the safest bet. Uh, looks like they have a tapped land, which is fine. Um, here, what I'm actually going to do is lead with the Black Source. What this allows us to do is if we happen to draw a Meat Hook Massacre, we've got the double black. Uh, if they happen to play just kind of a one mana, you know, spell or whatever, we've actually got some options. Uh, the Rebirth is a great draw. So what's nice here is Thirst for Discovery is obviously an instant. So we can actually just wait, uh, see what they happen to do and then react accordingly. We may, uh, I mean, there's no reason we're not gonna use the Thirst for Discovery, but this does represent something, obviously, to the opponent, and so you do have to keep that in mind. Culling Ritual might be really good on the upcoming turn here, we'll see. A lot of lands, wow. Um, hmm. With that in mind, we don't have a basic land to toss here, which is a little bit unfortunate, but uh, I think that's okay. I think we just throw a couple of lands back. It's a really unexciting play, I know, but uh, I, I just think that's probably the best option. So the option here, though, is do we Culling Ritual or do we wait? Um, I think we go ahead and do it with the expectation that we're probably going to Junji next turn. Um, and so I don't... I kind of want to be as mana efficient as possible, if that makes sense. This isn't exactly a, a one for one I'm super stoked about, but it does give us some options here. And now we can just play the Junji without needing to worry about, you know, well, should we play this? Should we play this? We can just go for it. Um, let's go ahead and do it. Uh, again, Junji, a really good card because even in a situation like this, we may not have a ton that we can do. Um, but what's nice is if they kill this, we obviously just can make them discard a couple of cards if we need to, and that works fine. Uh, perfectly fine by me. It gets rid of some resources in their hand, and then we've got the rebirth. We could just bring it back. Uh, and then, truthfully, if they kill it again, we can bring it back twice thanks to that flashback. So we do have some options here. I'm curious to know, though, if they've got some bounce uh, effects in their deck, like fading hopes and that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised, and that would be a bit of a problem for us just because it slows us down so much. Um, we do really just need to draw some non-land cards, though, at this point. That's really all there is to it. Another uh, Thrill of Discovery would be pretty awesome, or Thirst for Discovery, excuse me, would be pretty awesome, just to dig us further into the deck. Um, curious to see what they're doing here. It looks like they're trying to figure out what to discard. Um... The Meat Hook Massacre, that's fine. Does nothing. Um, I mean, it does set them up to, to potentially gain and drain some life, which is fine. All right, so this is fine. Because again, we make them discard two cards here, and then we're able to just bring it back next turn with the Rebirth. Uh, and, you know, we since we only have a lot of lands, this seems pretty good. Um, okay. So, I mean, the play is pretty clear. We really don't have anything else we can do anyway. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, they're obviously going to be able to flip the uh, restoration, which is a little frustrating, but it's not the end of the world, and we do actually outpace this. So now, again, if they decide to kill the Junji, we kind of just get to get rid of their hand, <laughs> uh, which seems pretty good. They do outpower us on the field eventually with the hull, uh, and so... That is something to consider. We do have the answer in hand, of course, but excuse me, that is something to uh, to look at as we're going through. And let's see what they can do. They did get rid of Path of Peril plus March. <clears throat> March is a surprising one because they could have exiled something, which I guess they decided not to do. That is not a very strong pickup for us. 
Uh, crucially, one thing we can consider is if they do have another march, uh, we can Infernal Grasp our own creature just to kill it and then get it back into the graveyard so that we can rebirth it. Uh, so just something to consider here, especially now that they're down to only a couple of cards. It's, uh, it's looking more and more like that could potentially be the play. If they discarded one march, I have to imagine they have another one. Exile is so good against a reanimator deck that, I mean, that just seems pretty obvious. Okay, so they are going to return the march. So this could work out for us. We'll see. What's cool is in response to the march, we just Infernal Grasp it, and then we bring it back with the Rebirth, and we're good to go. Uh, crucially, we want to use the one in our graveyard. Yes. I know this seems kind of strange, but we also get to discard a couple of cards from the opponent's hand here, so they basically have nothing left. Um, and then we get to rebirth it. So we're going to rebirth using the one in the graveyard. Man, lands like crazy. Uh, because um, I'd like to be able to be more mana efficient with this one later on down the road. Also, if they have like an exile from the graveyard kind of deal, like we don't really want them to have that ability. Okay. Uh, wow. Okay. I was about to say. <laughs> confused as to these attacks but that's fine let's do this i'm gonna take the seven for now uh we do lose a life in that process so we are down to lethal from the hall which is scary okay uh that's really really good so we do have to leave this up here though um and we just need to help like we have to get something here we need to get a non-land card we have drawn so many lands this game it's insane um Trying to think what they could have. So they could kill the Junji, which would be annoying. Um, because we really don't have any value to put off of it. Here, though, we do get to kill the Hall, which is quite nice. So I kind of want them to declare the attacks first, so we can kill and block that. All right, so... Yes... Uh, we're gonna have to pay the ward cost of course but we do get to kill this we lose a life in the process but we do get to kill the, the architect here as well so now we are down to three life which is a very scary place to be we need to do something about this but um we might be able to get somewhere okay that's actually weirdly helpful um that's actually super helpful okay let's attack in first let's get max damage in Let's go ahead and do this. And what this is going to do is offset their Meat Hook Massacre. So that can't be the way they win. Um, which seems kind of silly, I know. But it does work. Um, and at this point, I think we have stabilized enough that it's really just down to if they get a good draw, they've got a good draw. Um, but I think we're kind of in that same boat here. And we've got a creature on the field. So I feel a little bit better. Okay, they Meat Hook for five. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Thankfully, we get to bring it back. Um, and we get to deal two damage to him in the process. <laughs> Man, these rebirths are really coming in handy. Uh, okay. It's down to it. I mean, it's a. It, this is a very odd... Oh, no. Oh, man. So we do make him discard the card. Okay, uh, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to play the Hunt Master to spread the damage out. I think that's correct. I'm going to play this for zero. Again, we're just offsetting. We're not trying to win off of the Meat Hook. We're just trying to make sure that they can't kill us off of theirs. I hope this works. Wow, they just get to do everything. Okay. I mean, we have the rebirth, so like, we have another rebirth. <laughs> we have so many of these. All right. This is the funniest game I think I've ever played. This is the most back and forth silliness I think I've ever seen. I mean, we just have so many reanimator options though that it's kind of working for us. Did we win? No, so they, can they do this? Do they have enough? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They have exactly enough. Wow. They drew it off of the path to the world tree. You know what? I can't be upset. That was a weird game, but that was a really interesting game and a very fun one at that. Wow. Fantastic. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. That first game was a bit long, but uh, I don't think we can keep this hand. That's a pretty rough one. This we will keep. <clears throat> um, I actually think it's the rebirth that we throw back. Or is it? Is it the coma? No, I guess it's the coma because we do have more targets than we do Diagraph Rebirth. So I feel like that's probably the better thing to keep. Uh, it's a bit of a tricky play, but we do have the mulch in hand too. So it seems like that's the right call. Hopefully we get a couple lands off of this. One's okay. I mean, it's something. <laughs> okay. Uh, nice that we at least hit a creature. The Undead Butler isn't exactly ideal, but it's something. Uh, so I will happily take it. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we just do that. Um, the Culling Ritual should be a pretty helpful card in this matchup. They, yeah, Prosperous Innkeeper, sure. Uh, what's nice is the Culling Ritual actually destroys the, uh, the treasure token as well. Kind of funny. Um, I guess it doesn't really matter how we do this. So we kill two creatures with this and then get two mana. Uh, I still think it's worth it. Just get everything off the field, basically. Um, and then here we can just do this. And this does mill a few more cards, which hopefully we hit something. We didn't really, but uh, that get, that potentially gave us more stuff we could have done, but it did not. Uh, return target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. Currently we have none. Yasharn. What a great card. Uh, yeah. Cool. That's very solid. Again, very land heavy draw this time. Um, I mean, I think we just hold up. It's not a lot we can do at this point. Next turn, we do have the Huntmaster, uh, which is obviously stronger than Yasharn, which is good. There's can't pay life or sacrifice non land permanents to cast spells. Okay. That's fine. So they're going to get a 1 1. They get a life. That's all good. Uh, let's do this, and let's do this. Um, I don't think we attack here. It's only for one damage, and at this point, they would probably just double block. I don't know. They could do a lot of different stuff. Curious to know what they have here. Storm the Festival, very good. Oh, wow. Okay, Borrow Time is very annoying. Yeah, that's super good. That's super, super good. Okay. So they do have the Asharn coming in, as well as a 1-1. Maybe not the 1-1. One -one. Uh, I do think we double block on the Asharn. Um, they've got one mana available, and the 4-4 alone is kind of annoying, so I'd rather get that off the field now. And man, we are just... <laughs> flooding every game man every single game uh that's really ob obnoxious unfortunately but there's just nothing we can do it is what it is this is a deck where you need to hit your land drops so i'm not sure the exact number of lands in the deck you guys obviously will know from the description but like i don't know exactly i imagine it's fairly high uh however this really feels like we're just hitting all of it <laughs> uh which is not good all right, so what's the option here? I um, think we block. Saving ourselves some damage. We're not going to exile it, so we decline. This is just going to help us mill a couple more cards, which honestly is better than nothing. Okay. All right, let's do this. I think it's either this or bust, so I feel like we just have to. Okay, um... So I think we just throw Junji out, and they probably just kill us anyway. Right? Like, there's not a lot we can do. 
trying to think. Yeah, they just have so much power on the field. Wow, and the borrowed time. Hey, they got us fair and square. That was really unfortunate. You know, it sucks because in practice, I don't think I lost a single game with this deck. That's really obnoxious. It's okay though. I mean, we got flooded. There, there's nothing we can do about that. Well done, opponent. Um, let them kill us here. That's so unfortunate. All right, let's jump into one more game. We got to see if we can get one win with this, guys. All right, guys, here we are for our third game. Definitely our last game. Um, and do we keep this? I think we do. <laughs> the undead butler is semi-helpful in the beginning. Um, and hopefully we can get like a thrill of discovery or something along those lines later on. Double meat hook is not ideal. Um, but I do think we just played this and then undead butler. Let's see what we get. Mulch, land, and mulch. I would have actually really loved one of those mulches. We need double black here. Uh, and so that's a bit of a problem for us. It's like it's going to be the gruel werewolves deck, uh, which is scary in its own right. All right, we'll undead butler again. I guess there's not a huge reason not to. All the lands. Uh, let's go for the green and we'll pass. So what do we have in the graveyard? A bunch of lands, some mulches, and a culling ritual. Wouldn't have minded the culling ritual, to be honest. <laughs> um, all right. An extra black source would not go amiss right now. Uh, being able to sweep on, you know, a werewolf's deck is usually pretty good because at least you can get like a two for one or something along those lines. I think if they attack, we double block. Um, or they might have like a blizzard brawl. Looks like they do. Okay. Uh, we can still block. Um, I think we decline, obviously. We don't have anything else in the... Okay, they did not. Land. Now we have no land. What is going on? <laughs> this is so back and forth. I mean, this is a little frustrating just from the simple fact that, like, at some point we would draw something. Look at this. I mean, this is insane. I... There's literally nothing we can do. This is terrible. Uh, okay. Yeah. Down to seven. The culling ritual doesn't even... This is terrible. This is so bad. Okay. My heart is broken. <laughs> this is like my favorite style deck and we're losing like crazy. Sure. All right, you know what? We're going to do one more because that was stupid quick and really annoying. Let's do it. We got one more. All right. Please, please, can we can we get a win here? Um, I am going to keep on the basis that we've got a culling ritual plus an undead butler. We do have a couple of things in hand that we'd much rather have in the graveyard. Uh, so I'm hoping for a thirst for discovery because we do have the lands to do it. We got to hope for it this time gotta happen uh all right so i think we lead with this then go clear water pathway or excuse me the backside murk water pathway so we can get the undead butler down yay it's werewolves again <laughs> all right let's do this let's undead butler i mean the good news is this does block pretty efficiently um what do we mill here Couple of hunt masters. Okay, well, I'm glad to have those off the field, honestly. So what's the likelihood they have something? Probably pretty high, but I'm doing it anyway and I'm gonna make them burn it. Uh, yeah. Here it is. They put two one one counters on it. All right, cool. Yep, uh, I'm gonna decline. I don't actually need to throw anything into my hand at the moment. All right. Guys, I had high hopes for this deck. I'm not going to lie. This is really unfortunate. I really thought we could uh, at least get a win or two. This is a pretty solid deck in practice. Like, it's very surprising it's going this terribly. <laughs> um, we literally, like, have to do this. Uh, kind of an awkward sequence because we can't do anything with the mana. But uh, next turn, we do have Junji, which is helpful. We just have to hope they don't have, like, a Blizzard Brawl which in all likelihood is probably what they have. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so we could do this and slow them down a little bit. Could do it for three. 
Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna do that. This doesn't kill the old growth troll, I know, but it does get two of the things off the battlefield and gains us some life. One of those things crucially draw cards, uh, and I'm not super into that idea. <laughs> so, wow, cool. <laughs> All right, so annoying, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do this. That has trample. <laughs> Jeez. All right, so we do this. This is annoying. <laughs> we suck. <laughs> this is so stupid. They have a blizzard brawl. Look at this. All right. Um, we lose two life doing this, but... I think we literally have to. Cool. <laughs> we just throw it all away immediately. <laughs> just so we save the 10. All right, so what's the answer? Coma is kind of an answer. Culling ritual doesn't do it. I don't know, man. This is frustrating. I really thought we could do better than this. You know? It's sad. It's real sad. The mono green deck is stupid good, but this is annoying. Um, six, seven, eight. So we take one. We could have killed it but it doesn't really matter that much. Um, geez. We are terrible at this game. <laughs> that's all there is to it. All right, that's it. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Guys, uh, this is the most heartbreaking time I think I have ever had recording uh, a, a deck. This is so sad. I really thought, uh, you know, in practice, again, we may have lost one game, but out of like five or six, we won the majority of them by a long way. Uh, and so this is a really like disheartening way to do this, but unfortunately it didn't win. And you know, I can't, uh, I can't fudge it. It is what it is. And so I don't know, I guess the deck's not as good as I was hoping. Um, I, I did practice on the ranked ladder and that, I mean, again, that's where we got, I think four or five wins and then one or two, I, I think just one loss. Um, and so again, it's just a little surprising it didn't show up as well as it did on practice, but it's fine. I mean, hey, it is what it is. I do still love reanimator decks. This one just happened to not work out. I will say in the interest of fairness, we got flooded the first two games and then mana screwed the second or the third game, excuse me. Uh, and so really and truly that last game was just kind of the only semi reasonable draw, I would suggest. Um, and honestly, in the first game, we put up a fight. I think it was just they had a good top deck and that's all we could have done. So I don't know. It is what it is. I'm rationalizing a little bit because I'm very sad, but that's OK. It was still a fun deck. Try it. Make it good. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Thank you uh, for being a part of our community and entering that giveaway if you're subscribing. Uh, make sure you also check out the collection update video. Uh, we're doing a little binder challenge that I would love for you guys to join me on. Uh, but until the, the next time, guys, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much again for watching. I'll see you later.